the wiring was done by none other than Thomas Edison himself. <laughs> <laughs> and it hasn't been upgraded since. Yeah. It's a fire hazard. They, they need to change that all over. So that's, that's the kind of stuff that we're facing. Folks, we're, we're better than that. We are better than that. I met uh, small business owners all over, all over this state. And just by way of example, uh, Tony in Dedham, small business retailer right in the downtown area, independent shop owner. He pays his taxes, he's a good citizen, he's a good boss, he's got a few employees, he buys by the law. But Tony's really frustrated because he hears and sees all these stories about these big corporations that aren't paying their taxes and they are exporting their jobs overseas and they don't care about their local community. Folks, we're better than that. We are better than that as a society, as people of Massachusetts and as Americans. Now, I also heard people with a, a sense of lost hope because they feel like the American dream is broken. The American dream is based on faith and freedom. Freedom stemming from our democracy and through our capitalism that allows this creative tension between democracy and capitalism to actually create something new and better all the time in our society. And, and a faith that if you study hard in school and you work hard and you abide by the law that you will have an opportunity to succeed in this society somewhere, somehow, in some way. But that, and, and, I, and I will say that in some way, shape or form, I'm actually a product of that American dream. My, my folks got married very early, and they had kids right away. And dad was in graduate school, and uh, they didn't have a lot of money. And my dad was working shifts at his job uh, in, a, in a training program and the like, where he was working sometimes 24, 36 hours straight. And there was one instance where I got so sick during that time, and my mother didn't have a quarter didn't have a quarter to buy a subway token to take me to the hospital. I, I couldn't eat. I was becoming malnourished. She didn't know what to do. She had a friend come and help her and give her a $5 bill. She said she hadn't seen a $5 bill in three months. Now, my dad, when he came back from Vietnam, he came back to a household of five boys bouncing off the walls. No job he had, no income. Very rough. They they did not have it. Uh, they did not have it all figured out at that point. But through hard work, and diligence, and dedication, and some smarts, and a little help from some local people at a local bank, he succeeded eventually. And he lived out that American dream. And my folks gave me an opportunity to have a great education, and to bring me up with good values. And so today I stand in front of you here as someone who is a legitimate, and I think viable, and I think best candidate to be a United States Senator in this country. That's, that's what that American dream is all about. But the people, some of the people down in Washington, the Tea Party folks, and quite frankly, even the likes of Scott Brown, want to take that American dream away from us. They want to tear it down and tear us apart as a society. They want to denigrate our democratic institutions, and they are willing to shut down government and shrink it so much so, so that no one seems to have an opportunity out there to get some help and some assistance and some kind of lending hand to create an opportunity society and lift them up and allow them to grab onto that bottom rung of that middle class ladder and through hard work and dedication pull themselves up. Well, folks, we're better than that. We're better than the negative, negativism and the cynicism and the anger and the fear that that Tea Party-like uh, kind of folks are stoking <clears throat> in American society. I have great faith and confidence that we as a nation and, and those two pillars of democracy and capitalism, which have continuously allowed us to improve and adapt and overcome adversity and obstacles throughout our great history, that that will carry the day in the society. When I walked around this state, I met hundreds of people that have those qualities and that character of 
resilience and dedication and ingenuity and creativity and goodwill and goodness and kindness and fellowship to our brothers and sisters, it gave me great faith and optimism that there is a better way out there. And I saw that resilience and that ingenuity and creativity in all sorts of different places. And I'll give you a couple of examples. We were in Fitchburg. There's a manufacturing plant up there. And it was, they were about to ship all their jobs overseas. But the city and the, and the CEO got together and they created a cogeneration plant that cut their energy costs in half and kept those 200 jobs in the city of Fitchburg. I was out in western Massachusetts. There was a corporation that was going to close down the last paper mill in the Berkshires. And instead, the management team said, wait a minute, there's 120 jobs at stake here. We'll step in. We'll take that risk. We'll partner with the local bank and the local community. And they did. And they bought it. And they kept the plan open, the paper mill open. And they kept the jobs. And they've recently added 17 new employees. So they've now got 137 employees out there. I was in Roxbury. There is a fabulous program there helping 16 to 24 year old young men and women get apprenticeships and construction skills rebuilding buildings and homes and houses and commercial enterprises uh, so that they have a path that is not one of gangs and drugs and violence, but is a path towards a decent middle class job with good wages and good benefits. There are, there are dozens of stories, success stories, all throughout our Commonwealth just like this that give me hope and confidence and faith that there is still the spark of American dream out there throughout the society and we need to preserve it. And I want to carry those voices and these stories down to Washington to make sure that we can push forward for those kind of ideas, that kind of ingenuity, that kind of character, that kind of culture in this society, so that we have opportunities for everyone, the disadvantaged, the privileged, and everyone in between. Because we have a crisis here in terms of the middle class, and we need to rebuild it, and we need to create more new opportunities for those folks. So how do we do that? The infrastructure crisis that I saw and the jobs crisis, well, let's, let's just put the two together. It's quite simple. Let's rebuild those roads and rails and bridges and buildings. And so I'm a big supporter of the, the President's Jobs Program and that, that, because it does have a big chunk of money dedicated towards rebuilding our infrastructure and putting carpenters and electricians and pipe fitters and sheet metal workers, those good, solid, middle class jobs, put those kind of people back to work. And I'm a big supporter of the Buffett rule, because we need to pay for this. And I think we need to pull back and pull out eventually in some way, shape, or form, but fast from places like Iraq and Afghanistan. And I know how to do that without sacrificing our security, in part because my wife is an national security expert, but in part because I was a military budget analyst when I first stepped down to Washington. And I worked as a national security and foreign policy assistant to Senator Barbara Mikulski. So I know how to analyze those budgets. And I know how to help build a more efficient and a more effective military. We can do that. And we can do that by getting rid of the waste and the fraud and abuse that's going on in those countries to military contractors, bring that money home, reinvest it here in America, and put people back to work. We can also do more for small businesses. We should reinvest in the Small Business Loan Program. And we should be offering, if we're offering any tax credits, and I am against the tax credits for the, the big oil companies because I think that's just, uh, that's not the kind of company that needs help because they are exporting jobs overseas. If we are going to be offering tax credits, we need to do it for small businesses that start jobs and keep jobs right here in places like Whalen and places like Roxbury and places all throughout Massachusetts. We need to start rewarding the good guys. The good guys who are keeping American jobs here, not the bad guys. Now, we all know the challenges that we are facing as a country. They are economic. We have a global, hyper-competitive economic uh, uh, situation here that we're competing against other countries for good jobs and manufacturing uh, products and opportunities and wealth. We have complex financial situations over in Europe with Greek debt and Spain and uh, Portugal and countries uh, about to default. And how it affects our country is, is something that is happening faster and faster every day. We have a jobs crisis in this country. We have an infrastructure crisis in this country. We have, we have to end those two wars overseas. 
and focus on the priorities down in Washington that are the people's priorities, not what Congress has been doing over the course of the past couple of years.